We've talked a lot about working from simple to complex, but I haven't really talked about working from small to big. Because the fact is, you're probably not going to come up with the correct composition on your first try. If you're going to make some big epic illustration, it's really worth spending an hour or two making a bunch of different thumbnails. And when I say thumbnail, all I mean is a little drawing that's physically small to help you work out your ideas. Now this can't be a beautiful drawing. It's going to be very simple. By the nature of it, you can't put details in. And that's on purpose. Because if you can draw a quick little thumbnail to get a sense for the layout of your image, you'll be able to tell if it's working or not. So in perspective, once you get these general rules internalized, you can begin to do quick little spatial sketches. Think about what's this big 3D space that you want to design. Well, design it first in thumbnail, and then maybe you can blow it up and make a bigger image out of it. And thumbnailing is one of those things that's usually intensely personal. I can't tell you exactly how to do a thumbnail because usually they're something only you are going to look at. So speed is the most important thing. Being able to get your ideas out onto the paper so you can throw them away more quickly is the best. Because you might only keep one out of 25 thumbnails, so they don't need to be beautiful. And with that in mind, you can see that I don't even have a grid here. I'm just doing as quick freehand 3D as I can. So this is definitely helped by having lots of practice. But you can see here a few lines in and I already have a sense of a space. And I may put a few more details and give a sense of what kind of objects are in this space and maybe I'll even add in some people. But the general idea here is that you can see that I've created a very basic space in two minutes. And that's what a thumbnail is supposed to do. It gives you a sense of what the final image might look like without investing a lot of time. So here you can see that I'm following the basic perspective rules that I've done a lot of practice with. These probably won't be as smooth right when you're starting out because you're going to be fighting the technique. But once you get used to the technique, these can flow like water. And once you see a thumbnail you like, you can envision how it might look as a final drawing. So it's a good practice to get used to doing thumbnails. Do a thumbnail for every drawing you're going to do. At worst, you waste five or ten minutes. But at best, you save yourself hours of wasted work. So here I'm just drawing a simple cube. And this is just to figure out kind of the vantage point for my illustration. Well, put a few wheels on it, and now it's pretty much a car. So I'm going to do a real basic rough out here, but I can get all my ideas across in 60 seconds. Now, this is small and rough, but it tells me a lot of information. And maybe I'd take it to a finish, or maybe I wouldn't. But this gives me a lot to go from. Now, in this next example, I'm going to do an interior space. So I'll just start out by drawing the back wall. And then from that back wall, I'll pull those corners out towards me, and I have my space. And then to give it a little more grounding, I'm just going to project around the space, the way I talked about in Perspective Sketching Part 1. Maybe instead of an interior space, what I really wanted was an outdoor upshot, looking at some buildings. So I'll start with sort of my anchor building. And once I've got that one, the rest of the perspective lines are easier to fall into space. So I'm not using a grid here, but I could. It all depends on how comfortable you're feeling with the basic sense of perspective. So here I'm drawing a few extra buildings just to see how that sense of depth is looking. But already, in less than 60 seconds, I've figured out a lot about this composition. And I may throw it away or I may actually start... The main thing is that I'm not just diving right into the details. This is the ultimate way to go from simple to complex. Okay, let's do another interior space, but this time I want it a little more distorted. So that back wall is going to have a little more convergence, like I've put my perspective points real close to the image. One's right inside the image, and you can see I've drawn horizon line and left vanishing point. But then the right one is also pretty close to the image because of the way that those planes are converging. And here I might put in some interesting diagonals to kind of liven up the space and give it a little bit more volume. But these are just basic operations. And since I'm working so small, I really can't waste very much time figuring out what this space looks like. 
And since I put in a little extra detail in this one, it's maybe three minutes instead of one minute. Even if it was 10 minutes, all this kind of a drawing does is save you time. And it might be tempting not to do one. It's really easy to just skip right into the fun part. But thumbnails are so valuable. All right, for this one, I want to do a down shot where the horizon line is totally out of the picture plane. So I'm actually going to draw my horizon line just to keep it as a reference point. And then I'm going to lay in the most important plane of this image. This is sort of a large ground plane that eventually is going to have characters on top of it. And I'm doing a little bit of dividing here just to make sure that I get my center line properly done. But from here forward, drawing the rest of these details is quick and easy. I'm really just roughing out the major planes of this space. Adding in a little staircase here just gives it a sense of scale. And since I like that staircase, I think I'm going to actually add a second one. And now I have a bit of a nice open public space. And it feels like it could be an interesting thing to have lots of little people around. And to show off the sense of depth, I'm going to put repeated shapes here. Having three of an object in a composition is really great, because you know how big they all are since you see the one up close, the one in the middle ground, and then the far away one in the background. And it really gives you a sense of scale in your image. And here I'm going to enhance that scale by putting in a little people, dot them around my image. And now you can see what I've got tells a lot about this final picture. It may just be a quick little thumbnail, but this is the sense of space. Thumbnails like this are a quick shorthand to help your imagination. Because when I look at this thumbnail, I pretty much see a final illustration. And I might spend 20 hours realizing that illustration, but it was doing the thumbnail that allowed me to get a clear picture of what I was shooting for. So here I'm going to do another high angle shot, put in my horizon line, put in a vanishing point, and now I'm just feeling out the space. And so I want to put in a few diagonals just because I think they do a nice job of activating the space. And maybe this is sort of like a big drainage tunnel. At this point, I'm really not sure what this is going to be, but I'm just massing in large shapes. Because remember, I'm working from simple to complex. So I maybe want a cylindrical element, and I'll put a few more of those in the image just to really show off that repeated space. They're close in the foreground and then they recede into the distance. Now that I've got my big large shapes in there, I'll clean it up a little bit. I'll probably add in a few people and then I have got my thumbnail. It really doesn't take long to establish a space once you get the sense of these perspective rules. For this next one here, I want to keep the horizon line in the image. So it's not an upshot or a downshot. It's more of a street level view. This kind of perspective can be good to really establish the sense of scale in an image. It feels like something you've seen before because it's a vantage point you're used to looking from. And since my perspective point is pretty close, I can actually pull lines straight out from it to make sure they're really accurate. Putting in another diagonal here just to keep it lively. And I'm just roughing out this major shape. At this point, I really have no idea what my image is going to look like, but it's starting to sort of come together in my imagination as I work. And I'm going to speed up the footage just to finish this one out, but you can see here that this is really a quick process. Now, I may put a varying degree of detail in each thumbnail, but this is just helping me get to the next stage in my drawing. I'm not making something beautiful, I'm just making something that'll inform me and help me from wasting time. And since this process doesn't really change much from image to image, I've sped this last one up as well. I'm going to start with a very low horizon line. So I'm doing a stark upshot. I'm going to see the underside of this form. Right now I don't really know what the form is, but I'm just sort of bringing this 3D shell into space. And as I work on it, I get my imagination going start thinking about what it might be. And before too long, it starts to become clear. Now, whether or not I use it for an illustration or not, that's another question. 